Hi guys, the TLDW version is monoliths are okay, especially in a serverless managed runtime environment. Now, I work as a consultant in the IT industry and on the tip of the tongues of a lot of consultants is microservices and I've been burned by microservices. I'm having to pick up the pieces from microservices. So this is my video saying don't use microservices basically. I mean, just don't fall into the trap. And it's a very easy trap to fall into because like I'm, I'm a, you know me, I'm a Unix plan nine sort of freak. And it, it sounds very attractive that things are split apart and things are kind of composable, you know, mapping what I know to, you know, the web and all that stuff, but it, it doesn't map well. You don't want a distributed system. You want a monolith. You don't want to have to coordinate everything. You don't want multiple connections to your database. You don't want the potential crazy issues that you can get with uh, microservices. Like it's really hard to debug, um, you know, a workflow going, touching a couple of microservices. It's really hard. So I, I wrote a blog about it. I would love your feedback below, right? So, I mean, here's a typical, this is like a simple case, you know, you, there's some sort of flow, that, a purchase flow where, where the, there's some authentication service, there's maybe a, a payment service, and then there's a service to actually provide the service. So all in all, I don't know, we have a, you have to add this up, right? It, it, it can typically be, be quite slow. That's another thing with microservices is that, is that, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And if something is taking slow, then you have to like, you know, debug it. You have to monitor it. I think a lot of companies think, oh, I have my microservice, I can map it to a department and things like this, but you need some, some top level management here. You need to make sure things are coordinated. You need to make sure that these endpoints are fast because if anyone is of them slow, the whole thing becomes slow. And then, and then a lot of things people don't assume like the best case scenario, but like, you know, it's very easy for any one of these requests to time out. And then you have to think about your fallbacks and things like this. Getting everyone to do the same error handling or, or for other people to know that you're error handling, it's, it's such a tricky pro uh, proposition, seriously. So anyway, this is what I typically see, you know, something that's just taking a whole bunch of seconds and it's, you know, unreliable, error prone, all the rest of it. So how can we fix this? You could introduce like a, a queue, but then it depends like where you introduce the queue. It gets a bit tricky. Um, and then you have to manage the dead letter queue where things just didn't work out at all. You, and that's usually buried in some other obscure log file that no one looks at. Okay, we could make the, we could completely redo the this this purchase API so that it becomes asynchronous. So we've gone from like REST to asynchronous. There's no real good standardized way of expressing an asynchronized, asynchronous API in, in my experience. So when people say, oh, let's just make the synchronous API asynchronous, this is not like JavaScript. This is, this becomes a, a lot trickier. You have to like send the job and then perhaps get some, I don't know, job ID. And then you're supposed to check on the job until it's done. It's not easy. It's seriously not easy. I mentioned monitoring. Yeah, you can instrument APIs with like Prometheus, you have like a slash metrics endpoint, gather all up in Prometheus, have a Grafana dashboard, drill into which is a problematic API and things like this. But there's a lot going on there. It's it's really non-trivial to do this. You know, you know, there's lots of little, you know, what's an error, what is an error, this, uh, you know, defining the the SLOs and all this stuff, it's its a lot of bureaucracy. If it was all just in the monolith, this would be so much more manageable. Caching, well, caching is hard and it can lead to all sorts of problems. And then, yeah, like another typical solution is, yeah, let's just make the, the API it impotent so that it can be retried or something like this. That's, that's tricky because then the, that API should maintain some sort of state so that it knows what, has been happening. At least that's the way I've interpreted it in, in the past. So yeah, I've, I've, I've rebutted these things here again in text and it can easily get more complicated as I've tried to like draw here. 
and to conclude distribution systems are really hard. So in this particular case where I'm picking up the pieces of microservices, where these constant timeouts and everything's re unreliable, I'm going to recommend that they, uh, I, I know they're capable of the, I'm going to just recommend that they have to have a budget and make sure that the APIs are faster and less error prone to over to to improve their their current system but i would love to hear from you guys like is there a better approach that have i have i missed out some sort of trick manage microservices have i missed something I, i'd love to hear about your experiences i mean like like uh, i mean this is definitely a problem i mean aws wrote a blog just describing these problems and and solutions which i think is just just more complicated than than just making the APIs uh, faster. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my that's my consultant advice to my to my clients now. Don't use microservices. Go for Monolith, and if you do have microservices, you got to start managing them really well with Prometheus. Link in the description for one of my Prometheus projects. <laughs> but otherwise, guys, I'd love to hear your your take on this Microsoft madness. Comments below. Bye, guys.